Okay, guys. Had the night to, uh, you know, sleep on it and cool down and uh, still a little bit fired up about how all that went down. But, I mean, you know, really, when you think about it, it's Cleveland. It's the reason why I even make these videos in the first place, because if there wasn't just infinite frustrations watching them, then why would you even care, you know? You might be bored as a Patriots fan. I know people who watch the Patriots would tell me that they don't even care until the playoffs. And that's kind of, you know, a crappy thing as a sports fan. You want to be able to watch all the games. And so, I don't know. It's tough. It's very Cleveland. It's very Cleveland. And, uh, you know, typically, I don't even look at the comments on my videos because these videos really aren't about people telling me how good or bad I am at, you know, reacting to things. I mean, I just think... I'm so full of emotion and all that other stuff. I've ranted in my videos as to why I do this stuff. So really, I don't, I don't do that. But yesterday I was at such a low place. I was feeling so low after that game. I actually looked and you know, I, I, I get what people are saying. There's some rules in place and there's some things that were already decided upon about when the league's gonna go ahead and cancel the game or push it back, whatever. Roger Goodell is the god of NFL. He has it written in every collective bargaining agreement that he can do whatever he wants. He has a final say. There's, there's always a chance he could do whatever he wants. And really, he's only paid to be the ass of every joke about the NFL. So if you're pissed about something that happened in the NFL, you basically just say, fuck Roger Goodell. I mean, that's just the way it is. And he understands that. He even plays up the jokes about people booing him nowadays. So, all valid points, all valid feelings. I can't help it if people who aren't Browns fans are gonna seek out my video just so that they can go ahead and get excited about somebody from the Browns not or, or I'm sorry, a fan of the Browns not really being pleased about what they're seeing. I guess sometimes people need that pick me up and I don't know, maybe I'm here to give that to them. So anyway, all that aside, I don't wanna make this about that. What I really wanna say is a little glimmer of hope here. It's interesting. Nobody cares about the Cavs really anymore. I mean, certainly I've stopped watching them for a few years. 2020 has really brought me closer to sports though. So I've decided I would kind of just pay attention to them a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put up a bunch of graphics here to just sort of show you what, what's going on so far with them through one week in the, the actual season. Um, so first off, what I want to show you is a couple of people have ranked the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers preseason, um, you know, based on, of course, the fact that between the last two years, they've only had 19 wins. You know, let me ask you that, though. Last year, there was a uh, season that was sort of cut short, so there was less opportunity for them to win more than 19 games. But uh, nevertheless, they were one of the eight teams who didn't get invited to the playoffs. Uh, they were one of the people who, you know, was the bottom of the league both times. Once LeBron left, it was just a big confusing mess. We've just been getting, you know, young people, I think trying to figure out what we're gonna do next. Our coach obviously wasn't right. Just a lot of things that really weren't right. So I don't really knock anybody for putting them 29th, or, you know, in this case, 30th, or, you know, even just, you know, anywhere in the back there. I mean, it's a really confusing thing in Cleveland. But what's interesting about young teams is that they have the ability to mesh. They don't know anything about being wrong and failing and the expectations. They've never been there. It's just all hunger with them. So you kind of have to pay attention to those teams. I mean, the Celtics recently had a very young team and they took it all the way. Um, you know, it's, it's not impossible. So anyway, I've been paying attention to these first few games. But um, what I found out was the first couple of games that they had, we're gonna be against some pretty easy games, or pretty easy teams, so really not a lot to worry about there. Uh, the first game, of course, they played against the Hornets. Uh, they did win this game, they won it by a decent margin. It wasn't really in question. What I'm seeing through these first three games, I wanna say, is that there's just a lot of turnovers, a lot of confusion on the offense. It's what you'd expect from a team that's really not been together and has a new coach. But forgetting Okoro just to buff up the defense, and then, of course, having the defense really start playing in their own. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's starting to kind of look like maybe there's something to build here. Now, back to this first game. They did win that game uh, against the Hornets, which you'll see here, they were only ranked, what, the 28th team, uh, or I should say 28th in this ranking. Um, so they weren't really expected to do much. 27th, I believe. Uh, and then 28th was the Pistons. This is the team that they played next. Uh, took it to two overtimes. Start, started to kind of look like, okay, maybe or maybe uh, Cleveland isn't really going to be hitting a stride anytime soon. Um, you know, I mean, we had two wins, one of the few teams with two wins. There were stats up, really couldn't rest on them yet until we started seeing them play a good team. It's, it's like the whole Browns thing all over again, but 
they played the 76ers last night. 76ers, who by the way are ranked, uh, I believe, or were preseason ranked anyway, seventh overall. They were basically supposed to be running and gunning, and they were they had all these pieces working for them, and they were going to be strong contenders. But the Cavs really just put it to them last night. I mean, most of the game it was out of hand. It was at least ten to twenty points. I mean, I think it ended up being somewhere between twenty and thirty point victory. It, it was pretty out of hand, and. Again, a lot of turnovers you're still seeing. But I want to point out a couple of things that I've noticed. First off, the Cavs lead the league in steals per game. Uh, a little over 12 per game. Now, the critics were saying the defense was the weakness of Cleveland. But it seems to actually be the strength through the first few games. Uh, another thing you'll notice that I found a little odd, for a team that actually doesn't seem to have much to mesh with, they're also first in assists per game. So I'm not really sure how we take that. If you look at some of the stats, they are really high up in turnovers. I mean, they're one of the worst in turnovers in the league. I'm not even joking about that. Fouls, they have a lot of fouls as well. They're not disciplined. But for a young team, like I said, that's hungry, we're seeing some interesting stats here. Here's another one for you, three-point percentage, number one in the league. Now, I realize this is, just, this is only three games in, Everyone's gonna probably jump up and be like, oh, you need to calm down a little bit. Yeah, I do, I do. But again, in the factory of sadness, we really look for anything we can here. Let me keep going. They are also second in field goals per game, field goals made. Okay, so they're not just doing it from three, they're not just launching it from nowhere, they're not just the Splash Brothers. They're actually second in field goals made per game as well. And then third in field goal percentage overall. If they had one thing to knock about their offense, it's really, you know, of course the turnovers, but then their free throws. They're not great at free throws. And, you know, when we go back to defensive rebounding and, and that side of the ball, I believe they're sixth in defensive rebounding, eighth in rebounds total, uh, and I believe they're somewhere middling the pack in offensive rebounds. So, you know, again, they need to really work on their positioning on those boards. But very interesting here. They're now three wins, no losses. They played one team. That's actually supposed to be pretty good. And it wasn't even a contention. Now, I don't want to get anyone super excited here, but then I kind of do want to get people excited because, you know, in Cleveland, we really just, we really need that, all right? You know, I mean, the, the Jets, the Jets, I, I don't know what they're doing after that just happened. They locked up number two. Maybe that's a moral victory for them. I don't know. But that organization is just, that's never going to get better. Now, Cleveland somehow has turned a corner here and things are looking better overall. But the Cavs, I did not expect to be doing anything for maybe at least a couple more years because it just seemed to me like a lot of the analysts were saying that they don't have much, they can't really mesh, there's really not much for them to work on, they got too many new pieces. But in the early season, it seems like something's working there. So, you know, I'm gonna keep watching, I'm gonna maybe start you know, making videos on a weekly if they're doing something that's worth talking about. Uh, but again, it's not really gonna be one of those super action-packed long seasons. We're gonna you know, kind of be seeing a reduced number of games here. If they can really put in a strong showing early anyway, I mean, even if they do have some injuries or they start to run into some problems, if they can win a couple games early on, it might get us somewhere. I don't know, who would have thought? Anyway, stay tuned.